Welcome back. We're here with the uh, Masters poster winner, Corinne Gamarillo, and her advisor, Ben Enger. Uh, so congratulations, first of all, Corinne. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start with you, Ben. Ben, what makes Corinne special? What? Oh, yeah. that's, a, that's a good question. One of the things that Corey is really exceptional about is just her can-do attitude and her infectious enthusiasm for things. It's, it's a beacon that shines pretty bright in the lab and, um, you know, just us talking here, you've probably seen that bubbly personality. Um, it's important to have that when it comes to doing research and being able to get over the bumps and hills, which there's been a lot of in her project. So um, most people would be deterred by unexpected results that deviate from everything and she seemed to thrive there. So mm -hmm. that's that's pretty unique in a grad student that I'd say. Yeah. Um, so especially a master's student. Yeah, great answer. Corinne, I'm gonna turn the tables. Tell yeah. us about Ben. What, what do you appreciate about him? I would say Dr. Angers taught me a lot about passion and how it shines through your work. I think he really cares about what he does. You can tell that he thinks about it all the time. Yeah. And I think he cares about his students as well. Yeah, 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 he does. And it's just been such an inspiration to be studying under him wow. and to see how that carries through his work and his success. Yeah. Yeah. Nice comments. Appreciate that. Uh, why don't you tell us about your poster and what made it special? Hmm. Well, I would say the methods that we used were pretty unique. We used formalin fixed staph aureus. So dead bacteria, and we were able to elicit an immune response of um, an utter half. And we used a split utter design model too. So we were comparing between inflammation in the same cow, but the other, other half just had saline. It was just a really unique model because we were able to measure metabolism changes and changes in the gland locally. Okay. And it was all about mammary gland metabolism. And I think, I think the model that we used was really cut out to be able to measure that well. So Corey, what was the question you were really trying to answer with some of this? So you, you said you had a, a split utter design and you're, you infused Staph aureus uh, that was killed. But I mean, what's your general overall picture of what you're trying to get at? So you're looking at some instances of potentially mammary gland metabolism, but I mean, why is that important? What's the bigger picture that you've been fussing with for probably almost a year and a half having experiment after experiment? What, what's that general topic that we've been looking at? I would say simply, why does mastitis decrease milk yield and alter milk components? But going further into the research, I would say, how does mastitis affect blood substrate utilization of the mammary gland during mastitis? So did you see a reduction in milk yield? No. In this? No. We didn't. No. We didn't. But we saw changes in lactose and protein and lactate in our milk samples. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is that typical with mastitis to see those changes in the milk component? Yeah, you would expect to see decreased lactose, um, decreased protein in general, like long term, I guess you could say. We were looking at the initial response, so we saw an increase, but um, also changes in fat. But it, yeah, we didn't see the changes in milk yield. We were really trying to get there too, but. That was, that was one of the challenges mm -hmm. of going, hey, we want to look at this. Let's, let's start developing a system where we can elicit a milk yield response. And it never materialized. And like I said, those, those hurdles of unexpected results, that, that would defeat a lot of people and going, wait, we had somatic cell counts go up to 3 million and no milk yield response. That, that was very, wow. very hard for us to wrap our head around and it's it's been fun to work through that yeah. question and problem with Corey. Yeah. So what are the next steps with the research? Oh, get more money to keep going. Um, what we're trying to do is kind of build on this and start looking at that immediate response, which is what Corey did, where we're looking at, um, you know, the initial infiltration and recruitment of all those immune cells and how does the mammary gland cope and adapt to have that flexibility to maintain milk yield and then see if we can finally get there with a milk yield reduction and when that milk yield reduction results, where did those substrates that would have normally gone to milk synthesis, where did they go? 
um, you know, that, that question of um, immune cell competition, it's not a new thing, but I really think it has a tremendous amount of pertinence to why we see that milk yield loss. You know, those immune cells, they're pretty glycolytic. Well, what's the biggest driver of milk volume? Lactose. That's all glucose. So, so, so how, how much did lactose percentage change in these cows? Do you remember? About three tenths of a percent. And, say, and yeah. it was a little less than we were anticipating. But the, the important thing to realize here is it's a sterile bolus. If we put E. coli in there, it dropped like mad, partially because the E. coli are chewing up the lactose. And so that, that was a big deal for this study. So Corinne, you're a master's student now. Uh, what's your plans after graduation? I'm going to get my PhD at okay. the University of Calgary with Dr. DeBuck. Oh, excellent. Yeah, but I'm not staying with mastitis. I'm gonna be looking at feet now. Digital feet. dermatitis, yeah, and genetics. So I'm, I'm switching it up a little bit, <laughs> but staying with the dairy cows, so. Yeah, well, good for you. You know, I. Uh, unfortunately did not announce at the beginning of this that you are from The Ohio State University, so I had to get that back in there. And so we, uh, we wish the best for you. Good luck and uh, thank you for joining thank us today. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. All right, thanks, Ben. Thank you.